In this video, we're going to talk about how to convert the attitude of a bed from one format to the other. This is an unofficial Aspox study video for um, my students uh, who need to review their structural geology before taking the Aspox exam. Um, it's unofficial. I'm not sponsored by the Aspox in any way. Um, and this video is not meant to be uh, a direct reflection of what is on the exam. It is just a study tool. So let's talk about how to convert bedding attitude. So when we say the bedding attitude, what we mean is essentially the strike and dip. And there are different ways to convey strike and dip. So let's say that you have a surface. Um, maybe it's a fault surface, something like this. Let's say this is the surface that you're looking at. So this surface has a strike, which is the direction where if you took a horizontal plane and you try to intersect a horizontal plane with this surface, that intersection line is your strike. And dip is perpendicular to strike and describes the downhill direction and downhill amount. So you can imagine that there's an angle between this plane and the horizontal. That's your dip. The direction that it goes downhill is the dip direction. And again, this is strike. So there are three ways that we write about the attitude of a bed. You can either use strike and dip, okay? And within strike and dip, you can either apply the right hand rule or not apply the right hand rule. If you do apply the right hand rule, then dip direction is not included as part of your strike and dip. It's just assumed that if you looked along the direction of strike, the plane would fall off or dip down to your right. That's what the right hand rule means. Now, we don't just have to do strike and dip as azimuth, where you have some amount of 360 degrees and a dip direction, or sorry, a dip amount. You could write this as quadrant notation, which is going to have a direction like north, the value that you move around a, a hemisphere from north to either the east or west. So I'm just writing these as an example. And then your dip again. If you follow right hand rule, you wouldn't have a direction here. If you're not assuming right hand rule, you would write your dip direction here. So for example, if your rock was dipping to the southeast, you would write southeast. And the third way to write uh, the same information is just to include dip and dip direction. So to do that, you would write the dip amount, and then you'd write the exact dip direction, not just southeast, for example, but that precise um, amount to the southeast. So we could say like south 30 east. Okay, so strike and dip in azimuth, strike and dip in quadrant, and strike and dip in uh, dip dip direction. Okay, so what is the attitude of this bed? So first off, I'm giving it to you in quadrant north 87 east, 5 south. So what I would do first is try to visualize what that actually means. So as much as I know a lot of you probably didn't like stereo nets, uh, give yourself a circle and come in here and just try to visualize north 87 east. So if I go to north, then I move over 87 degrees toward the east. Oop. That's west, that's east. So north, 87 degrees east, puts us really close to just straight down to the east. And we're only, um, we're, we're striking that direction. And we're dipping five degrees to the south. So you don't have to draw in the full arc um, as if you were plotting it on a stereo net, but I'm just gonna do it to keep myself uh, in line. So that's the strike of my bed. That's the dip um, of my bed, and it's five degrees in that direction. It is going to be worth drawing this little picture. 
You don't have to draw the arc in, but just draw in your strike, draw in your dip direction. Okay, so the first thing that I want to notice is this does follow right hand rule. If I imagine looking toward north 87 east, so I'm going to line this up with my point of view. If I am looking to north 87 east, sure enough that bed is falling off to the right to the south. So I am written in right hand rule um, and I'm going to write this as dip, dip direction. So my dip is five degrees, but now south is not enough because south doesn't give me this exact position. So what you're gonna do is just add 90. So if we go from north 87 east and we wanna sweep around 90 degrees, there's three degrees here between this arrow and east and then there's going to be another 87 degrees right here moving down toward the south and then there's going to be a little three degree gap right here between south and where that where that arrow would land if we imagined extending the dip direction out so that means that this dip direction is south three east and that's how you'd write it in dip dip direction. Now I wrote quadrant here but we are given it in quadrant so let's write this in azimuth. All right. North is zero in azimuth. So if I go around 87 degrees I'm at zero eight seven and my dip is three, or sorry, my dip is five. So that's my azimuth notation for this problem. All right, let's try this next one. As much as you're gonna hate me, draw yourself a little picture. <laughs> All right, south, 14 west, puts me right here. So this is my strike and dipping 70 degrees to the northwest. So I am steeply dipping in that direction. This one does not follow the right hand rule. Wait, does it? If I imagine looking to the southwest, oh yeah, it does follow the right hand rule. Sometimes I just write it out of habit. <laughs> Oh, too long in structure. Okay, south, 14 west, 70 degrees to the northwest is our dip. So dip, dip direction would be my dip amount, which is 70, and my dip direction, which is going to be this plus 90. Okay, so if this is 14, I'm going to add here to get uh, part of the way and another 14 degrees. Now, I can't talk about direction from west. I have to talk about direction from north. So what I'm gonna do is take 90, because that's the, the degree amount from north to west, and I'm going to say 90 minus 14, and that's gonna give me 76. So this right here is north 76 to the west. So that's my dip, dip direction. And then I'm gonna write it in um, azimuth as well. So it's going to be coming for azimuth all the way around to this point, which is going to be 90, 180, 270, 270 plus 14 is 284. And our uh, oh, shoot. Nope, I was about to write dip direction and azimuth. Sorry, guys. We go 90, 180, and uh, 180 plus 14, so 194. Never too experienced to make a mistake. And then your dip and dip direction. 
70 degrees. And you could write 70 degrees northwest if you wanted to. All right, one more example. Um, feel free to pause the video too, by the way, if you want to try and do it and then check your work. That's a great way to use this video. All right, north 25 west, where this is 25 degrees in between here. Dipping 15 degrees to the northeast. So I've got dip, dip direction. My dip is 15 degrees, and the direction of my dip is 90 degrees from that. So this is 25, and this is going to be 90 minus 25, which is 65. North, 65 east. And then in azimuth, my strike is going to be coming all the way around to this point. So that's 360 minus 25. 335. And my dip is 15 degrees to the northeast. Right. So hopefully um, this video helps you understand how to convert the attitude of a bed from one format to another. Thanks.